My name is Mary, and I use she, her pronouns, and I will be your service leader today. If you are visiting, please participate as you feel comfortable. You are invited to stay and introduce yourself in conversation following the service. Our congregation is committed to individual freedom of belief, welcomes diversity, seeks to promote a sense of community, and fosters religion that enriches the spirit. We are a mostly led community, strengthened and enriched by weaving together the volunteer contributions of members and friends. Our community is supported and guided by our minister, Victoria Holloway. As we begin our service, please take a couple of breaths to become fully present. Relax, bring your attention into this moment of communal reflection and sharing. We acknowledge that we are the traditional homelands of the Swabash, Coastal, Salish Nation, Native people. The Kiwala people have lived on and stewed in these lands since the beginning of time and continue to do so today. We recognize that this land acknowledgement is one small step towards true allyship, and we commit to uplifting the voices, experiences, and histories of the indigenous people of this land and beyond. Whoever you are, whomever you love, however you arrived here, you belong here. I'd like to invite our chalice lighter, Gay Roselle, to come forward. Good morning. Let us light our chalices together in person and online. With these words, multiple truths, multiple multiple truths, by Reverend Julianne Lepp. We seek our place in the world and the answers to our hearts' deep questions. As we seek, may our hearts be open to unexpected answers. May the light of our chalice remind us that this is a community of one 
of wisdom and welcoming of multiple truths. delighted to be here with you today. I identify as a queer, white, Pacific Northwesterner, and today I'm wearing my rainbow stole in honor of our theme, which is pluralism. Our opening meeting today is a responsive meeting called You Are the Lover and You Are Welcome Here by Reverend Joan Javier Duval. Your line, your response is written on a sign you are beloved, and you are welcome here. Whether tears have fallen from your eyes this past week, or gleeful laughter has spilled out of your smiling mouth, you are beloved, and you are welcome here. Whether you are feeling brave or brokenhearted, defiant or defeated, fearsome or fearful, you are whether you have untold stories buried deep inside, or stories that have been forced beyond the edges of comfort, you are right, and you are right whether you have made promises, broken promises, or are renewing your promises, whatever is on your heart, However it is with your soul in this moment, in the space of welcome and acceptance, commitment and recommitment, of covenant and connection, let us worship together. Our opening hymn, Come, Come, Whoever You Are, is about this theme of recommitment. It's a real favorite. But there might be something that you don't know about the poem that was the basis for the song. We never knew on God about the music to go with the poem by the Sufi mystic Moon. An important line was left out. We really didn't go with the melody. So I'd like to read the translation as a poem and listen if, if you know this one, if you can hear the line. Come, come, whoever you are. Wanderer, worshiper, lover of evil. It doesn't matter. Ours is not a caravan of despair. Come, even if you have broken your vow a thousand times. Come, maybe. come. So today I'm going to teach you a counterpoint with the line, though you've broken your vows a thousand times. Because that piece of understanding is at the heart of our relational faith the catching the use of coming and going and coming back. So it's, uh, it's very simple. I'm going to get my helper over here. And um, just so you know, my, uh, my specialty is preaching and our guitar playing. I know four chords and I have two more for you this morning. <laughs> So the counterpoint goes, though you've broken your vows a thousand times, though you've broken your vows a thousand times, though you've broken your vows a thousand times, though you've broken your vows a thousand times. That's it. <laughs> So pick whichever you like, the counterpoint or the melody. Oh, and this is number 188 in your grade. <laughs> so that you have that in front of you. You can even switch back and forth if you're feeling bad yourself. 188. And it starts, it starts at that point. Go ahead and join me. Thank you. 
I'd like to invite Jay Gurkey to come forward to offer our reading. Thank you, Victoria. Good morning, everybody. Nice to see you fall around. There's a lot of, lot of words in this, a lot of words to think about in this reading. There's my temple. My mother in law, Teresa, Tet, Castillo. That's a mouthful for a name. Who was the president executive minister of the United Church of the Philippines and was also the first lesbian minister ordained in the Philippines. So, here we go. Latino, believer, unbeliever, or a wild one, <clears throat> you are welcome. We have no definition of who we are, but human. We have no code, but that of respect. We have no creed, but that of equality. Here's my temple. Identity seeker, sinner, stateless or not. You are welcome. Constraints or expression, but space. We have no code but to listen to poetry. Between the silence and the surrender. Here's my te temple. Nature tripper, urban dweller, or saint. You're welcome. How shall we divide the world but by our breaths? We have no pope above us, no infallible will. We have no judgment but in terms of harm. Here's my temple, history maker. Marginalized, unorganized. You are welcome. We have no convent above us, but mutual assistance. We insist on no assumptions and doubt no facts. We are free to theorize with emotion and call it hope. temple, unbecoming, expert, robe, or disrobe. You are welcome. We have no dwarfs or giants. Goliath fell long ago. We have no seal on revelation. Tentative is truth. <clears throat> Lead by your desires and serve by your power. Here's my temple. Funny, temperamental, shy, or wise. You're welcome. There is not one way of being human, not even Superman. We have no world but that which we together create. as much wisdom in harmony as in dissent. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. And now we have the very exciting opportunity to welcome, as we do every year, our new members into our community. This annual ceremony is an important and joyful tradition in the life of our congregation. As Reverend Victoria Weinstein reflects, Unitarian Universalists have gathered for centuries seeking a higher purpose 
and a deeper life than you could find alone. We're grateful today that you have found your way here and that you've decided to make a commitment to this faith community. We hope that as a member of the AIUU, you will allow yourselves to know and to be known, to minister to and to be ministered unto, to love and to be loved by this congregation. We never really know what combination of fate and friendship and good luck it is that brings certain people together in this world for any purpose. So we believe that membership calls us to celebrate being drawn together and to regard each person as a spiritual friend and a potential teacher, even of occasional hard lessons. The relationships we form in our congregation are based on the needs of the soul that we are each of us vulnerable and reliant on each other's grace and goodness and generosity of spirit. As members of Vashon Island ULU, we pledge to be guardians of each other's spirits, to respect the ultimate privacy of each person's human struggle, and to affirm each other's inherent dignity. And we rely on the wisdom of our covenant to remind us of our true purpose in being together. So, new members, I invite you to rise and come forward. And those of you attending on Zoom today, if there's anything you just give a wave. And the words for our new member ceremony will be on screen, and I will gesture to you to affirm your commitments. And congregation, there are also words for you. If you can see the screen over there, the words will be on screen. Do you guys have them? Is there something you have to sign up for? It is. Yeah. So take your time. <laughs> Remember, you have chosen to make a commitment to this congregation. Will you offer us your presence and gifts as we seek to create a community and a world dedicated to love and justice? <laughs> congregation, will you welcome these new members and friends? with the warmth and community of your companionship and add your strengths and talents to the new gifts they bring us? Will you share our triumphs and our struggles as our community grows and changes? We will. <laughs> new members, will you accept our gifts of fellowship and discovery and service? We will. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> I would like, now like to invite Kim Kimback, our board president, to come forward for the signing of our membership book. Are, are we that? Oh, is there a last line? Oh, yes, that happens afterwards. <laughs> Hello to each of you. <laughs> Ro Roxy, I can't say. Hello. <laughs> As president of our board of directors, I'm grateful to welcome you all on behalf of each of them and our entire congregation. I will now invite you each to come forward to the pulpit to sign our membership book. The membership book is a treasured symbol of our freely chosen faith. It holds the memory of each person who has come into our congregation and said yes to making arms with us and learn together. Our Vice President Ann Lewis and member Craig Hall will present you with a sign of our gratitude and appreciation. A rose and a copy. <laughs> Sometimes we will do this. Um, a rose and a copy of the Unitarian Universalist Pocket Guide, edited by Reverend Susan Frederick, Frederick Gray for your learning. So thank you so much for coming. Are there any of our new members online? No. Okay. So we have um, Jerry Gerke. Will you please come forward? Oh, it's 
So, Jerry Gerke. Yeah. I hand you your brand new member name tag. And I hope you'll enjoy these books. Thank you. Roxy Hathaway, please come forward. Yeah, okay. Brand new name tag. Thank you, Mom. Some books that you might enjoy. Thank you. And a rose. And a rose. And a rose. Roxy, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Jay Marcel, please come forward. Here's your new name tag. Thank you kindly. Oh, I'll take it. Enjoy. Thank you so much. And we also would like to recognize Anne Hamlin, who joined back in 2020 and in the pandemic changed all of our lives. And so welcome back, Anne. Thank you. Thank you so much. And Spencer Prophet. Sorry. All right. Very good. All right. And now, all together as one congregation, new and continuing members, let's affirm our covenants together. This is the Vashon Island UU Covenant that holds us with common purpose and common love in the midst of our diversity of belief. We, the members of Vashon Island Universalists, strive to build healthy relationships as a spiritual practice. We intend our promises to foster trust, Thank you very much. You may be seated. So our theme this month is the UU value of pluralism. And this UU value is personal for me as I grew up culturally pluralistic as a third culture kid dancing between cultures and countries while my mother served in the U.S. military. Between grades K through 12, I attended eight different schools. So I learned to find common grounds and to make new friends fast since I would be moving again soon. I wasn't a natural lover of moving. I fell in love with parts of every place and every culture and the people I was close with no matter where. So in my search for identity as a younger adult, I questioned my cultural belonging as a citizen. Was I an American or something else? I didn't have words for it then, but I embodied pluralism, a mix of different cultures, ways of knowing, and identities. When I found my way to Unitarian Universalism, I hoped that this faith community could hold me and my cultural identities without having to claim one over the other. Where I could heal the pain of losing so many communities by making an intentional and personal commitment to belong to one. Where I could claim a new pluralistic religious identity and find meaning in something larger than my culture. Perhaps that is why some of you newcomers are here today. 
The mission and the purpose of our job is to guide people to a sense of what is ultimate and also what is most intimate in reality, which some call the divine. The Malaysian theologians understand the divine as being on our side of those who are oppressed, and that includes the parts of ourselves, even when we hold privilege, that have been marginalized and that haven't found their place of belonging. Dr. Leticia Guardiola Sainz, a liberation theologian who is one of my seminary professors, sees the divine at work in multicultural and multiracial mixisms. Her understanding comes from her experience of growing up in the borderlands of, uh, between Mexico and the United States. This, she is Christian and seeing her understanding as relevant to the universalist communities. She writes, I have seen divine human encounters and all encounters between people and peoples as constant negotiations of limits. Border crossing is inevitable. But it needs to be done with respect, avoiding illusion, and acknowledging the inescapable hybridity that occurs in all contact zones by which we are transformed. All border zones are vulnerable, and people living in them can survive only through interdependency. Our new values of independency and pluralism are linked in this way. We are transformed within a pluralistic contact zone. There's a pluralistic contact zone where I live in Kent, which is where over 100 languages are spoken. At my local library, Children's Story Hour is offered in Spanish, Vietnamese, Mandarin, Hindi, and Tamil, a language of Eritrea, Ethiopia, and also English. That library is a form of taxpayer-funded institutional pluralism. There's a great article in You World Magazine, which you know members will start to receive soon, written by Jasmine Von Hall. She notes that libraries are currently in the crossfire of book building battles. Books published by our very own Unitarian Universalist Beacon Press, like An Indigenous People's History of the United States, An African American and Latinx History of the United States, both by, by Dunbar, Roxanne Dunbar Ortiz and Paul Ortiz, as well as White for Julie, Why It's So Hard for White People to Talk About Racism, by Robin D'Angelo. Why are these battles so heated? Some say it's because we have an institutionalized civil religion in America. Sociologist of religion Robert Bella argued that this civil religion has seriousness and integrity and requires the same care and understanding that any other religion does. G.K. Chesterton politically called the United States a nation with the soul of a church. And our current president has argued that we are fighting over the soul of the nation. Where do these ideas come from? If the national soul we're fighting over is like a church, what are its teachings and foundational truths? New Minister of Evan Forest Church, author of one of the books we have to remember. Identifies pluralism as the American creed found in the national motto, E Pluralis Unum, out of all one. He explains that the American creed invests everyone who comes here with transcendent value. In this respect, unity is indeed an American sacrament, but it is our pluralism that unites us. Otherwise, our motto would be Unum or unity alone which decidedly we are not. At our finest, we remain both proudly pluralistic and united. The tenets of American civil religion can be identified in American founding documents, and we affirm the equality of citizens, consent of the governments to govern each other, the quest for justice, and fidelity to the democratic process. And in his first inaugural address, Thomas Jefferson expanded on the American creed to include freedom of the press, of the person, as well as friendly relations with all nations. 
The United States' expressions of citizenship often take on religious dimensions, from patriotic rituals like singing the national anthem at sports events, to legal oaths made in a courtroom, to tell the whole truth, so help me God. The tension between civic duty and personal beliefs becomes a genuine challenge for navigating the intersection of patriotism and faith. In today's America, there's an unresolved tension between the ideals of this American civil religion and the diverse theological and secular beliefs held by various communities. This tension causes great anxiety in our society, an anxiety that has fueled the emergence of Christian nationalism. At the heart of this anxiety is a cultural story of what it means to become American, to accept a logic of assimilation. But to accept America's creed of pluralism actually implies renouncing traditional religious practices and beliefs. And that to become mixed and transformed into something else rather than coexisting alongside one another in some form of imagined purity. From within this tension, I believe that the voice of Unitarian Universalism is the voice of as a multicultural and multi-faith religion, New Year is a contact zone where traditional liberal theology and civic values can be mixed with faith practices, where pluralism thrives, and where covenant, not creed, forms the foundation of our faith. Because a covenant, as an agreement or a promise, can hold multiple truths and perspectives, which is the basis of our democracy. And just as democracy requires participation, so does our covenantal faith. Quaker activist Parker Palmer reminds us, I believe in democracy as long as we understand that it is not something we have, but something that we must do. Our union covenant calls us to a commitment, to an embrace of the holy, of the spirit of life and of love in all of its manifestations, and a responsibility to side with the oppressed to uphold laws and abide by principles when they are rooted in faithfulness and justice and love. And when law and order are unjust, we have the responsibility of dissent, to be a loud voice calling for a return to the values of equity and justice and growth. We're called to be imperfect prophets, inviting the nation of which we are a part to come back to the table, though our promise of equal rights has been broken a thousand times. Our moral principles affirm and promote the practice of self-governance, and our congregations, citizens, and residents come together to learn how to do democracy within a religious context that values love and care and connection a context that values making and restoring sacred promises of commitment to one another. It's when we practice. We don't always get it right, and it's okay. Unlike the Declaration of Independence, the royal principles are expressed in the language of the sacred language, the sacred promise of covenant rather than rights. However, our principles do learn the American civil religion and affirming the inherent worth of every person, advocating for justice and equity, championing a democratic process, and envisioning a goal of world community with peace and liberty and justice for all. Some of our principles also clearly distinguish Unitarian Universalism from the American civil religion. By affirming and promoting the free and responsible search for truth and meaning, and respect for the interdependent web of all existence, and journeying toward wholeness by dismantling racism and other oppressions in ourselves and our institutions. In our own mission here at National Energy, we say that we create sanctuary. And because we commit to creating sanctuary for one another, we accept responsibility to try not to cause harm and to repair that harm when it is caused. That's how we build trust with one another. When we explore questions of ultimate truth and meaning in community, we temper the right of free speech with the care of responsible speech. As you use, we affirm respect for the independent way of life. 
And although Native people of this continent have always understood this sacred relationship, this way of understanding is still being fought for through policy and legislation as corporate activities threaten our ecosystems. And the country has not yet seen a proposed constitutional amendment that gives inalienable rights to other species and to the ecosystems on which they depend. So that's part of our really particularity. And also, our eighth principle actually mirrors and restates part of the Declaration of Independence. If a form of government becomes destructive to the consent of the governed, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it, to institute a new government laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. That's the Declaration of Independence. And at our time, unlike that time, consent of the governed includes people of color, people who are indigenous, women, and followers of the religious traditions that weren't represented at that time of the founding of the United States. So the foundation for removing the barriers to fair perceiving for everyone, for dismantling racism and other oppressions in ourselves and our institutions, has been part of the American civil religion all along. And I think that's what we're fighting about in our country in this election year. Participatory democracy is a learned behavior, and you know that it's a embrace of religious pluralism and increasingly multicultural pluralism is a faith that mirrors the soul of America. Our congregations embody the democratic spirit by fostering engagement, dialogue, and community building. And through covenantal relationships, we learn the art of self-governance, nurturing a culture of care and compassion and mutual respect. We deepen the life of the spirit that gives life to our religious practice. And we learn to use our moral voice to speak truth together with each other as a form of power. As stewards of this faith, of this covenantal tradition, we are called to bear witness to our shared values, to speak truth to power, to care for one another, and to advocate for a society where all are truly free and equal, as we create this pluralistic tapestry woven through with respect and dignity and justice. May our faith guide us, our covenant sustain us, and our love for humanity inspire us to build a pluralistic world where there is liberty and justice for all. Amen. Let's have a moment of silent contemplation and worship as we consider things of worth in generous and abundant silence. Please rise in body or spirit and join me in singing number 1008. When our heart is in the holy place in the tear hall.
We prepare our hearts for joys and concerns. Brothers and friends of the National Island Military Universe, Military and Universe of us, we commit to supporting our congregation. Financial resources help us pay speakers and staff, support our social justice programs, and maintain our building. Please support DIVG with your pledges and offerings so that we can continue to be a vital community. Our congregation engages beyond our walls for peace, social, and economic justice, freedom, life, and protection of our planet and its inhabitants. Once a month, we contribute the financial offering to a regional, national, or international organization that aligns with our values. This week's offering supports our beloved community. As we, as our greeters pass around the baskets, let's uh, all join in singing. We give thanks. said, Holy One, Mystery, God. But then, thinking these weren't enough ways of addressing that which cannot fully be addressed, she added particularity, saying, Spirit of Life, Spirit of Love, Ancient Holy One, Mystery we will not ever fully know, Moon, Witness, Great Kindness, Great Ego, Eternal Stillness, and then there wasn't any need to say the things she thought would be important to say. And everyone sat hushed until someone said, Amen. Do you want to join us coming up and extinguish our chalice? We extinguish our chalices with these words by Elizabeth Sarah Jones, adapted by We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, the fire of commitment, or the power of transformation. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Thank you all for participating in today's service here at Lewis Hall and online. Please join us for refreshments following our new events announcements. Okay, if you okay, 
All right. If you have an announcement to share related to a VIUU activity, VIUU activity, VIUU activity, please come up and form a line along the side of the sanctuary. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Robbie had an idea this morning that um, it, 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 there's no hell, but there's a purgatory. But the purgatory is there's a line and you never get to the front. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> I have two announcements. One is very important. The other is very important. Um, our program committee, which is, uh, I must mention, uh, going on, uh, despite the various efforts of all of us who have taken part in it, um, every year does a, not an evaluation or a survey, we give feedback on what worked well in the past program year and uh, what maybe fell a little short and what was missing that you would like to see or what was done too much that you'd like to change. And this is your opportunity to please help us in forming next year's programs. And so we have, both online, as you have undoubtedly seen in your newsletter and completed, <laughs> all of that available uh, in the back. Uh, we have hard copies. And we need to get these back so that we can collate them and give you a report on annual meeting. So if you'd like to complete them while you're having your coffee, or if you'd like to take them on the next Sunday, if you'd like to complete them online and direct them toward um, or uh, we would very much like your help with this. It looks very intimidating. Uh, it's lined in black. Uh, those of you with European origin, that does not mean it will be morning. It's just, you know, the flukes of my printer. And um, the other announcement is that after a long time, I finally remembered to bring my fifth row of seats. So, I want to thank Robin and the woman who just stepped out, huh? Um, for, oh, 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 I don't know, but Margaret speaks with the group and lets this information through. And I am told that as our sole outside fundraiser, Margaret and the group have single-handedly brought in almost $2,000 to our fellowship. So, that's everybody. Remember your thrift for receipts. Put them in Robin's lunchbox. And uh, thank you. It's harder now that they ask you, do you want a receipt? You have to say, like, yeah, I want a receipt. So, <laughs> to get your receipt. Hi, my name is Catherine. Give me a tease for what's going on down there. Next weekend, uh, we have Reverend Zachary Vinci, the title, I hope I pronounced that properly. He's a pastor at Kids Hat Peninsula Church. Uh, I'm going to Damascus. Uh, it's a look on transformation through the youth of today. And I'm super honored to say that our guest musician is Wyatt. Uh, he played for those that remember such scenes he played last year at our last day. I remember this was your speaker, so it was super great that he could come back next weekend because it is Mother's Day. It's fun, he's got an all new crew. I took the final crew in the service, so it'll be fun for those mothers that can be here. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kim, and I have a couple of announcements. One is that the board will be meeting this Thursday, so if you have any pressing uh, issues that you want to discuss, or us to discuss, please get those in somehow. And um, that's Thursday at 1 30 here at Lewis Hall. And night, or whatever day it is, I think the 19th is our annual meeting. And it's really important, uh, especially the members, all members, for you to be present. And so you can vote. And if you can't be present, you will get information about how to do the proxy. So um, as part of our principles, we support democracy, and that democratic support is evidenced by your raising your hand. Um, and there's one more thing. There's going to be a cleanup crew uh, in here again. 
Uh, sometime I the dates in the newsletter, but I always go up and get in trouble afterwards that I've said the wrong date. So look in your newsletter. Uh, and things are going to change a little bit as we fill this the warm up bar and water. We may take away some of your very favorite chairs. So you have all the favorite big chairs or different chairs or something maybe replaced with other chairs. And the reason they can be replaced is because you gave so wonderfully. We had the over eighty five thousand dollars in some of that. Money is going to go into equipment for us, and so uh, I can't tell you how grateful I am for, for that generous giving. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm Tom, and Kevin didn't tell you all that my last chairs go away, we're going to be sitting on the floor, <laughs> but other than that. We'll meet here at 7 o'clock this coming Thursday. So, everybody is welcome that uh, would like to come, and I'll be bringing popcorn. And if anybody else wants to bring something, that would be great. Thank you. Oh, oh. Victoria said I didn't say what time. And it's a good idea. Thursday, this coming Thursday at 7 p.m. <laughs> It takes a village. Quick <laughs> <laughs> again. Um, yeah, as Kim mentioned, on the Pledge Drive, we each step over $85,000. At this moment, those who haven't pledged, those who haven't pledged, you still have an opportunity to be newcomers. <laughs> Um, and then secondly, um, I'm going to shamelessly plug, I'm going to transgress your admission not to work on something, but I want to plug my wife's studio, it is the arts tour, it's this, don't make it clear, yeah, <laughs> and she, that's why she's not here today, and uh, it's this weekend, or next weekend, so if you get a chance, go say hi, I said hi to the uh, the old Google store, but yeah, I don't want to get into that, but just say hi, come on, This is not really a new event, but it takes place here, Mary, so it's okay. <laughs> Just for those of you who like to be artistic and creative, there's a wonderful group that meets here on the second Monday of every month. It's a SUNY cookie. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not SUNY cookie. It's a SUNY painting class. Jerry Jo Carstairs is the one who's behind it, and she has her teacher, who of many years is our teacher. And it's been very successful and we had a lot of fun. So if you're interested in it's it's a week from Monday if you're interested, get it. Oh, it's from nine to three we bring our lunch. And if the first time you come, I'll share with my, my stuff with you and we'll see what you think about it. It's fifty five dollars for six hours, which is a lovely time. So I hope we see more of you there. It's really good and really fun. Thank you. <laughs> Breathe in, breathe out. Um, my boss over there, that's my boss, that lady up there, on the mics and everything. So I can bring this up. What was it about? No. Uh, we used to have a nice thing that we could introduce a guest and I met somebody coming in. I'm so glad I was puttering around my car. Um, Jackie, is that her? Did I say it right? Nancy. Nancy, oh, okay. Can't read that very well. The glasses. Um, thank you for coming. And I just met her trying to get into the church. So I took her. She was coming here. She really was coming here. And um, I just want to put out for um, the song on 105.0, it's called Jazz Hallelujah.
We are just fans. So, there we go. Okay. Birthday pencils. Birthday pencils. Oh, yay. Let's say, who has a birthday? I don't know. Come on up. Come on down. May birthday. Here we go. Here we go. Mary. Oh, you're here. Hi, Mary. Hi. Yes. Cynthia's here. Come on. Julia. Julia. All right. All right. Where's your pencil? Oh, thank you very much. Okay, ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear people. Happy birthday to you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I love sharing my birthday. Oh, one second. Okay. Thanks for sharing your um, DIU announcements and others. Please join me. She, I don't know why I'm so flustered. I think it's the birthday pencils. I love it. Swag. <laughs> okay. Please join me in singing Go Now in Peace. Uh, well, uh, yeah, what is it called? Isn't it the same words over and over again? Well, that's kind of what, I don't know. Stand, sit, raise your arm. Oh, yes, yeah, stand. Stand if you're able. And then if you're not, then stand in spirit. Uh, Go now in peace, go now in peace, make a spirit of love surround you everywhere, everywhere you may go. <laughs>